East Village that has been serving as a reticketing center. Once adult migrants have been living in a shelter for 30 days, they have to come here to reapply for a shelter bed. But some migrants have been afraid to lose their spot in line, so they've been sleeping outside in the freezing temperatures. You know, our staff was out there and saw yesterday morning even there were 100 people that had slept over. And as I left uh, Washington, D.C., I did not leave with optimism. I left with the cold reality uh, that uh, help is not on the way in the immediate uh, future. It is going to be at this moment, it's going to be up to New Yorkers and this administration to continue to navigate this, this challenge that we're- I think after hearing that little bit there, it seems to me that uh, this man's career is over. It just happens to be over before it's officially over, of course, meaning that you have at least three more years in that city where you have to deal with him or at least the uh, the damage from his administration. And also to go on top of this, it also tells me that the city of New York just may be over as well, given the fact that uh, you got a migrant crisis, the uh, prices are through the roof, and of course now it's wintertime and people are going to hospital for hyperthermia. Didn't we warn you guys of this? Talking a lot about the city of Chicago and the city of New York both. Now, I can already hear somebody say, why in the world would you leave with Chicago, even though you're talking about New York City Mayor Eric Adams and the situation? Well, the reason why is because we're about to get that information from uh, Chicago here soon, and we haven't even gotten to 2024, at least the election itself. And of course, even if things were to change as far as party was concerned, you would not see any improvement for a while. So this video right here is not so much to tell you what's going on or what's going to happen, but explain exactly how the process is going to go. So make sure you guys stick around for the full video. So the migrant crisis, and I've been talking about this for a while, and we've been you know, looking at this entire situation now that it's winter, you've got the temperatures are, dro are lowering, dropping like crazy. It's about to start dropping in Chicago. It's about to start dropping pretty much everywhere in the uh northern section of the United States, it, including it also includes where I live at here in the south. But still at the same time, the cold up there is obviously much, much different than the cold down here. Now, here's the deal. Eric Adams, he went to Washington, D.C. last week. All right. Uh, apparently, he was supposed to meet with Biden, but the truth be told is he never met with him. He met with congressional leaders instead, and his hope was to try to get some additional cash out of the Biden administration. Of course, that right there being at the uh, taxpayer's uh, behest. But, of course, the Biden administration is more focused on a uh, losing war in Ukraine. They're now focused on giving money to Iran while at the same time giving money to Israel, the country that we actually support. And I'm pretty sure you guys kind of see where we're going with this. fact of the matter is these people, these migrants, are exactly uh, what the Democratic Party wanted them to be. Good old-fashioned votes or future votes. However, then comes the question of exactly how many of them will be left. Now, guys, I am not going to be advocating for anything Along the, along the lines of what you may be thinking, especially with the cold. What I'm doing is I'm alluding back to previous videos where I talked about a lot of the migrants are saying, you know what, screw this, I'm going to head back to Venezuela. Some migrants, of course, are saying, screw this, I'm going to go to another town, down south. It makes you wonder exactly what all this was for. And I've been saying for a while that this right here looks like a possible humanitarian crisis because if you don't have the money to treat certain people or say if you don't have the money to put into certain services, this also includes police, EMS, and fire. I'm waiting on those numbers to come through here soon because, as many of you already know, the New York City Police Department has cut the next five graduating classes of their police academy. Chicago is going to be going through this very, very soon. But the thing is this right here. When you have emergency situations like, uh, let's just say, uh, possible hyperthermia, hypothermia, meaning the temperature drops, hyper, meaning the temperature increases. So if it sounds a little bit confusing, I apologize for that. It's just the way that I talk. Uh, the thing is this right here. You're going to need ambulances. You're going to need EMTs. You're going to need medical personnel to help take care of this to get these people to the hospital. But then again, though, what happens if the hospitals become overloaded? Now, New York City's got a lot of them, and you're probably thinking maybe it's not that big of a deal. But if somebody keeps on going through hypothermia, they keep... Uh, <laughs> getting sick, then after a while, uh, people are not going to make it. After a while, the immune system eventually gets broken out, especially given the age of these people. This is not like it is when you're a small child or a kid where you get sick, your immune system recovers, and all of a sudden you get sick again. I'm not a doctor I'm just giving you guys basic knowledge. But how did this entire thing start? Well, let's go ahead and roll the first bit, and then we're going to roll the second bit. Then we're going to roll to how exactly it is that Mr. Adams is reacting and responding to the fact that, quite frankly, him and New Yorkers are pretty much on their own. 
Adams is at the White House. He's scheduled to have a meeting with the Biden administration in the next few minutes to talk about the migrant crisis here in New York City. I would assume reporter Darla Miles is here with what the mayor hopes to accomplish in today's meeting. Darla. Liz, we just learned only in the last hour that Mayor Adams will be meeting with the White House Office of Intergovernmental Affairs Director Tom Perez. The Adams administration had been working to get on the White House calendar in advance, but had nothing confirmed when he left for D.C. this morning. He rolled the dice that showing up in person might help move the needle forward. It looks like it worked. This is trip number 10. Mayor Adams in Washington, D.C. for a 10th visit Thursday about the billion dollar migrant crisis overshadowing his term in office, hit with the lowest approval rating ever of any mayor at 28 percent. You could just see of uh, the poll numbers of uh, the action on our national government has taken a toll on New York City. New Yorkers are angry. I join that anger. Adams attending scheduled closed door meetings with Senator Chuck Schumer and House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries to discuss strategies on how to secure more federal funding. But nothing on the calendar to meet with President Biden. Late Thursday afternoon, in a bit of a surprise, the administration agreeing to sit down with the mayor at 5.15 p.m. We have been committed, uh, have certainly put forth um, uh, resources for mayors to deal with the influx of migrants. Uh, we have had multiple, multiple conversations. The migrant crisis has forced the mayor's office to make several rounds of severe budget cuts across all city agencies, which last month included the FDNY and NYPD for the first time. Adams also meeting with FEMA Thursday in a bid to try to mitigate these costs with more federal funding. And there was a real uh, sense of collaboration from the FEMA administrator uh, to you know, assist us in you know, these very uh, challenging times that we're facing in all of these cities. And Adams says he's working with other cities like Chicago and Denver on how to keep the Band-Aid fresh over this national sore spot. We're going to have to get the president of the United States involved. He owes it to the American people to fix a broken border. Now, as for Adams at the White House, the meeting with Perez is closed door. It should be happening right in about four minutes. And we'll bring you any developments from that meeting when it concludes. Really quick, you're going to hear me say this a lot in this video. They keep on saying that the state of Texas, the state of Texas is sending all these migrants. However, there's a problem with that. Abbott recently just signed an executive order basically saying that anybody who's law enforcement can detain anybody that they want that's illegal. So you're probably going to see a lot more apprehension soon. Something else to go on top of this, and I've covered this in previous videos, and I'll go ahead and rehash it now, is that he's not the one who's sending the migrants. They're just simply leaving from Texas to go to these areas. The reason why is because the Biden administration is providing all the funds to go. Now, I want you to think about something really quick. If Greg Abbott, if the, if the governor of Texas, if Greg Abbott was sending all these migrants to New York and to Chicago, and to Denver, and of course to L.A., which we haven't really heard much out of, then why in the world does he have the money to do so? I highly doubt that the state of Texas has got the amount of money to send these people everywhere. It's something that I've heard in the comment section from people saying it's Greg Abbott who's sending these people to these areas. No, no, no. And if it was Greg Abbott, don't you think that maybe the president of the United States, the current administration, could put a stop to it? No, that's not what's going on here. What's going on here is that the current president is allowing more and more migrants to get to these big cities so that way he can eventually create voters. Also, at the exact same time, taking advantage of one particular race, the abortion rate, high abortion rate, high murder rate, and of course the high disease rate. That is what's going on here. I've talked about this in a previous video, and of course there'll be a much, much uh, further in detail uh, essay coming out sometime next year discussing this, because of course we're at the end of the year, it's Christmas, and don't worry, there's even going to be a few updates at the end of the video to kind of let you know how the week is going to go. But still, the thing is this right here. This situation is an absolute mess. So much a mess to the point to where a lot of people are, how do I say this, they're starting to see the writing on the wall, and that is, of course, that they are, in fact, on their own. Let's get to the next report. As the weather gets colder, there are more questions about how the city plans to make sure migrants stay warm this winter. All right, Fox 5's Morgan Mackay joins us now. And Morgan, even FEMA's reached out to the city about this very topic. You're exactly right, Stephen and Tasha. And for almost a week, there has been a line outside the reticketing center in the East Village with hundreds of migrants waiting to reapply for a shelter bed. We've shown you those lines. Well, today, the city is implementing a new New policy and while there is no line today many advocates are worried what next week will look like
people have had to go to the hospital by hypothermia, which is very concerning. For almost a week, this has been the scene. Hundreds of migrants sleeping outside this site in the East Village that has been serving as a reticketing center. Once adult migrants have been living in a shelter for 30 days, they have to come here to reapply for a shelter bed. But some migrants have been afraid to lose their spot in line, so they've been sleeping outside in the freezing temperatures. Our staff was out there and saw yesterday morning even there were 100 people that had slept overnight. But late Wednesday night, Legal Aid says that the city started to implement a new policy to encourage migrants to go inside to wait. They will get a ticket that will let them return to their spot in line, and it seems to be working since the line was empty Thursday afternoon. But many migrants say they are confused by this process, and the tickets are more like wristbands. Just those bracelets. These two men from Venezuela say they have been applying for a shelter bed for three days now, returning each day to see if a bed is open. They say they are staying at a holding site in the Bronx, which is more of a waiting area, not a shelter, and then they return back in line every day. And they are not the only ones. Sometimes we sleep in the park. You know, so cold, we don't have clothes. This group of men say they've been trying to get a shelter bed again for over a week and don't understand their wristbands. This is from three, three days ago. The city says that only around 20% of migrants return to this reticketing site after their 30 day shelter limit is up, but also admit that things are constantly changing. The mayor's chief of staff, Camille Joseph Varlak, says that FEMA has been pressuring the city for a long-term plan for how they plan to care for migrants in the winter. But she says they are asking the wrong questions. It just sets the wrong tone. When it comes down to it, this is a national crisis that New York City should not be uh, carrying on our, on our backs. Now, according to the city, more than 2,700 migrants arrived here just last week. Also, in the meantime, Texas Governor Greg Abbott posted to social media yesterday saying he plans to send even more migrants to sanctuary cities, including... Really quick, very interestingly uh, noticed here, a lot of these people are now using tarps as blankets. Now, tarps are not going to provide a whole lot as far as uh, warmth is concerned. I know that when you get cold, you typically tend to want to wrap up with just about anything, but I don't see how the uh, tarps are actually going to help in this case. Now, is there a possibility that uh, maybe they're dealing with people throwing crap at them? I don't think that's the case, but then again, though, given New York, given the fact, and by the way, I don't say this to be a jerk or anything to New Yorkers. The city of New York has its own personality, and I've met a lot of people served with guys from New York. Most of them were pretty good to go. Uh, it's very, very rare that you actually find somebody that's, you know, the quote unquote stereotypical, but the truth be told is this right here. If you're ever in trouble, uh, the New York guys were typically the first ones to come in on your behalf. Um, just, 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 just go ahead and throw that out there, but still at the same time, tarps, using tarps as blankets, not a very good look there, Eric. And again, though, at the same time though, like I said before, and I've said on multiple occasions, they shouldn't be here to begin with. They need to be on the other side of the border going through the proper channels to get to the nation legally. And this moment in time, given all of our problems, uh, yeah, we can't take these people on. So the mere fact that Eric Adams has got to go beg the Biden administration for all this money should kind of tell you that maybe he wasn't that good in managing the overall situation to begin with. But still at the same time, it is the Biden administration that quite frankly is making everybody's life a living hell to a certain degree. Whereas in Chicago, they're actually egging the people on to come in. Those were the main differences in this case. Eric Adams ran on a platform of uh, basically being a little bit on the woke side, even though he never really truly was actually woke. Some people have said he ran on the platform of trying to be a tough on crime Democrat. I don't fully agree with that because of where the party was going at the time, especially going into 2022. Whereas Brandon Johnson, on the other hand, is an actual true believer. You see, Eric Adams' plan was to get in office and govern it like the typical New York mayor. You know, uh, like, uh, what's, I mean, Ed Koch, for example. You know, he definitely wasn't going to be a Giuliani. There's no way he was going to be that there. But he was probably going to try to be closer to Michael Bloomberg because the city had an extremely horrible mayor in uh, Bill de Blasio right before Eric Adams came in. Whereas in the case of the city of Chicago, where you have food, desert, socialist places, all that crap there, Brandon Johnson is trying to egg that on. That's the difference in the case here. Guys, I just showed you what you already know. Lines are piling up. People are being forced to wait for a bed. 
Of course, those gentlemen that you saw were probably just better off sitting at the holding center because if they stayed at the holding center, uh, they wouldn't be as bad, which makes you wonder when the hell is Penn Station, when the hell is Union Station going to start being, excuse me, not Union Station, but uh, Grand Central Station. You had me thinking about Washington, D.C. for a second. It makes me wonder when the train stations are going to go absolutely bonkers. It makes me wonder when uh, LaGuardia or Kennedy Airport, when they're going to actually start getting a lot of people as well. It makes me wonder when that's going to happen because, you see, after a while, you've got to find a place uh, for these people to stay at. Of course, these people, in my opinion, should not have come. They should have stayed right behind the uh, border, which, of course, is completely wide open. But, of course, these people are here now, and it makes you wonder what's going to happen. You see, a lot of these people were waiting for work permits dated all the way back to July 21st. Meaning that, of course, if these people showed up beyond July the 21st, they more than likely would not get it. And, of course, I've shown you the residents in Chicago, especially black residents, who have been upset for a very long time because these Venezuelans and these migrants are getting roughly $7,000 a month to uh, basically do whatever because it's basically a good old-fashioned handout. That's what they're doing. They give these people a handout in the hopes that these people will stay, which makes me also wonder exactly what they're doing with the money that they've got. I mean, seven thousand dollars. It's cold outside. I mean, I haven't talked about this before. Amazingly, I haven't. It's cold outside. It, it makes you wonder if you're getting all this money and you want to leave and you want to head back somewhere. Is there anything? It's possible that maybe you could. I don't know. Maybe borrow a cell phone, go to Expedia or something, and get a plane ticket back to Venezuela. It makes you wonder exactly what's going on here. And I can already hear somebody in the comment section say, oh my God, these people are so brave because they're willing to, to brave it out and sit in the winter and take the cold to, to get the American dream. That's not what's happening. It seems to me like these people are just straight up freeloading and they're freezing in the process while they are, in fact, waiting for yet another handout. And that leaves a bunch of people who did not get one, who are now stuck out in the streets. People that we said should have stayed on the other side because of what the hell was going to happen. There's no way in hell you could process this many people or get them housing at this level of time. Not to mention the fact that a lot of these people have already been staying in hotels. They've been staying in very, very nice places, and now they're upset that they're back on the street. Maybe you should have gotten here a little bit earlier. Maybe you should have taken advantage of it then. Or maybe you should have done what I said. You should have stayed across the border. Yes, it's possible that YouTube will more than likely limit the ads on this video, and that's okay. But still at the same time, you got a mayor who's lost all of his emergency powers, who's also at the exact same time blown the entire city's budget. And this is a city that's got right around 8 million people who live in it. And of course, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's probably somewhere closer to 12 to even 20 million. Basically, all the tourists that come in, all the business people who come in, all the people who are commuting from neighboring boroughs or neighboring cities, or, you know, even from Jersey, possibly, the situation has gotten messy. But of course, we called this, but... Um, now we got to talk about Eric Adams one last time. Let's let's just let's, let's watch this. Yesterday, I was in Washington D.C. Uh, to meet with uh, our congressional leaders and to meet with the White House. And I wanted to take the opportunity at the uh, White House uh, celebration for the holiday season because I knew I would have a gathering of lawmakers, uh, mayors uh, from across the country. And I was able to speak with the mayor of Chicago and leaders from uh, Massachusetts and others. And we're seeing the same thing across the entire country. Our residents are weary. Our residents are angry. Our residents are seeing the impact of the migrant and asylum seeker issue, how it is taken away uh, from the rest the resources that should go to the day-to-day -day services of running the city. Uh, we did not walk out uh, from D.C. with any level of optimism that anything is going to uh, drastically change. Uh, it, it is clear that for the time being, uh, this crisis is going to be carried by the cities. Um, here in New York City, as you know, uh, we had a very um, painful November plan that we had to produce, and now we're looking forward or in the direction of how do we address the $7 billion budget deficit that we have to address in January. And these men and women behind me who are service providers in some way or another, they see firsthand of what these cuts are doing and will do. This is not the budget we want to pass, the budget we wanted to pass, clearly invested in children and families and those who are in need. Uh, we are at an untenable situation right now, 
and it is painful for us. Uh, it is painful for the city. And I think that you see it being reflected in the polls. It is because our federal government actions have taken a toll on the people of this city. Uh, we're going to continue to do our job um, in this administration, uh, but it's, these are extremely challenging times. And as I left uh, Washington, D.C., I did not leave with optimism. I left with the cold reality uh, that uh, help is not on the way in the immediate. New York City, or if you're from New York State, please leave a comment in the comment section. I want to get, I want to hear what you guys have got to say. Is Eric Adams worse than Bill de Blasio? I know some people from New York who haven't really based a full opinion. They just don't like him already. They haven't liked him because of the migrant crisis. They don't like him because of his tone. But I don't think you can get a whole lot worse than Bill de Blasio. Yet de Blasio served two terms. How can you be this bad? I mean, look, it's not hard for you to jump up and say no or tell the people, the people who live in the state, which, of course, he's done this before, but then he turns right back around and changes his mind again every two seconds. Look, we cannot take any more damn people in. Send them across. Send them everywhere. What they're doing is they want this voter base, as I said before, to replace another voter base, and they want this particular voter base that's coming over to also bump up the blue state's electoral college numbers. Their goal, of course, is to pass some form of immigration policy to where they can actually legalize these people. Well, of course, they obviously don't need to be here. This is illegal. This is what this is. And this particular uh, mayor has obviously fallen into the trap. By the way, I didn't mention this before, but uh, you're talking about a sexual allegation, a sexual harassment allegation that came up. You're talking about one of his uh, big backers being investigated, linked to him. Eric Adams is obviously, his career is pretty much over with. And it's not just over with in the city of New York. It's probably over with when he goes anywhere else as far as uh, possible law enforcement. Yeah, remember, he's also a cop too. This man right here's career is absolutely over. It just so happens to be that he may have taken the city of New York down with him. But before I get those updates, let me go ahead and tell you guys exactly how this entire, this, this entire thing is going to go. It's going to get cold. It's going to be very cold. You're going to have more and more people on the street. Obviously, the sanitation department has received budget cuts, so obviously trash is going to pile up. How long will this last? Not only the trash, but also the fact that you're probably going to have less EMTs, less firefighters, less medical personnel to take care of these people when they get sick. Oh, what's next? Is it possible that maybe some diseases, flu, whatnot, who knows, maybe even COVID, may come back, and next thing you know, it spreads to other people in the, area, in the area. This guy literally put everybody at risk. That's exactly what this guy did. And now that the weather is cold, you got to wonder exactly what's going to happen now. Well, I don't think the Biden administration is going to stop sending in migrants. So it's probably going to get a lot worse in the city, which is sad too. But I've been saying for a long time that the people of New York who voted for this, you got what it is that you voted for. It just so happens to be that not only is Eric Adams the one whose career is over with, he just may have taken down the entire city of New York with him in the process. Now, let me go ahead and give you guys a couple of quick updates. I'm going to be posting every day the rest of the, uh, all the way until about December the 23rd. There's going to be a Christmas video coming out. And of course, that Christmas video is going to kind of like look back at the year a little bit, not too much, and give you guys some updates for the following year. I have not decided whether I'm going to go and take from December the 23rd off to January the 1st. More than likely what will probably happen is that I'll take uh, uh, December the 24th, 5th, and 6th off, then post again on the 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th, and then take New Year's Eve and New Year's Day off, and then come back with the new content on January the 1st. I'm still ironing that out. You guys will know better exactly how that's going to go next week or more than likely next Saturday. It's also going to be a weekend where I'm probably taking a lot more personal time to myself to kind of get some things squared away going into Christmas. I'm also the guy who does most of the, most of the cooking, especially on Christmas night, because we don't do turkeys anymore. We do good old-fashioned steaks. And, of course, I'm doing prime rib this week. With that right there being said, guys, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comments section. There will be another video coming out this afternoon to go along with this one. We're going to try to go two a day the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the month, or at least until Christmas or until a couple days before Christmas. So make sure you guys stay, stay tuned. With that right there being said, Merry Christmas, guys. I'll, talk, I'll see you guys later.